Hey guys, it's Conf Kali Studios here, and Six Flags Great Adventure just released the 2024 park map for Great Adventure. So in this video, I'm going to be going over everything new I've been able to spot on the map. Of course, this is a monumental year for the park. This is the park's 50th anniversary, and you can see already that there's a ton of new stuff on the map, which, as I expected, this is going to be a huge year, and that is very much so shown on the map. So in this video, let's take a look first at the most obvious new feature other than the 50th anniversary logo here and the Great Adventure Resort logo, which now markets the park as a resort with the theme park, water park, safari, and glamping. Flash, vertical velocity, looks great on the map here. It looks like they shrunk Cyborg a little bit to what it was on previous year's maps and moved it over slightly so they could cram Flash in here. It looks like a very tight squeeze here, but the ride looks great. It looks like it has red trains on the map which doesn't necessarily mean that is what it's going to be, but typically a pretty good indicator of what we can expect, though Nitro still has its old color scheme on the train, so take it as you will. But you can see the track layout here is a little inaccurate. It kind of spreads out a little more than it should back here, but we can see where the Arboretum is going to be located, just across the path from where it used to be. And it's not really going to be underneath Flash, as we know from the blueprints. It's going to be kind of next to Flash in Justice League in that big open area, but this is going to look great. And we can see, of course, that there are two new locations next to it. Number 24 is a dining location, and that is called Central City Snacks. Flash originates from Central City in the comics, so it seems like this is going to be almost a mini land for Central City. Curious what kind of offerings they're going to have there. But right next door, number 14, is a shopping location and is called the Flash Store. So I imagine we could see a lot of Flash merchandise and things of that nature located there. They typically have a new gift shop located next to their new attraction for the year. So this is really cool to see. And while we're on the subject of Flash and by proxy Cyborg, if we go over here, we can see some updates to all the rides. First, we're going to look at Flash and Cyborg, both of which are labeled as opening summer 2024. So they're going to keep Cyborg closed while Flash is under construction. And it seems like they're both going to open together once Flash is ready to go. And something interesting here you can see is the height requirement for Flash. So it says the minimum height requirement is 56 inches, which makes this the highest height requirement in the park tied with Twister, higher than any other coaster. However, it's a little deceiving because 48 inches to 56 inches may ride with an adult that is taller than 56 inches. So what this technically means is that you can ride this ride as long as you are 48 inches, just like with El Toro and Jersey Devil, but you need to be accompanied by someone who is over 56 inches. Just keep that in mind. If you're, say, a parent with a younger kid who's not quite that height yet, they're going to have to ride with you or someone else who's taller than 56 inches, so just keep that in mind. And I do find it interesting that there is that height restriction there because, as far as I know, most of the Vacoma coasters don't really have the same height restriction like that. So, interesting to see, but... Cool nonetheless, just keep that in mind. But Flash is far from the only new thing on the map. Another really prominent thing that pops out is Roaring Rapids, which we can see here on the right, has a brand new logo and it looks great. It's kind of a mix of the classic logo it had back when it first opened. And they've added those graphics of the water with the raft. It looks really, really cool. So very happy to see that. And another new thing over here is Dream Street, which is now labeled on the map you cannot see the bricks here, but you can see that there is no longer a wall or a patch of grass like there used to be on the old park maps, because obviously this was blocked off. It is now open, so you can walk straight through, which is great to see. And while we're on this side of the park, I'm going to scroll over to Plaza del Carnival, where you can see the brand new cut through path between Plaza del Carnival and Golden Kingdom. I had been talking about this a lot last year. Basically, this is going to allow you to go between El Toro and King Ka without needing to walk all the way around, which is going to be a great quality of life improvement. Very happy to see that. Additionally, Runaway Mine Train has a new logo on the map. You can see it's a little different than it has been in years past. And there's a little banner on the bottom that says since 1974, which is really, really cool. And right above that, Safari Off-Road Adventure has returned to its original location, which was the station that was used from 2013 to 2019 before it went to the drive through for COVID. That is back. And another thing that is back is Best of the West, which is labeled as number 42 for the dining locations, which we can see here is back for 2024, which is really exciting. Before I go over some of the other dining locations, I am going to go through this list of rides here because you can see a lot of highlights in yellow, which have the openings for all these attractions. So Giant Wheel will be opening spring 2024, along with Skyway Lakefront and Skyway Frontier Adventures, both of which opening spring 2024. 
Runaway Mine Train will also open spring 2024, so it won't be ready for opening day, unfortunately. Sawmill Log Flume is opening summer 2024, so what this means is that the only attraction that's going to be open on opening day in the Frontier Adventures area is Medusa. Everything else will not be operational quite yet. Now down here at the Maximum Thrills, we already talked about Flash and Cyborg. We have Superman and Green Lantern, which aren't opening until Memorial Day weekend. We can of course see here that yet again the parachutes are no longer on the park map. So I'm curious if maybe they're going to be demoing the parachutes and that's why they're keeping Green Lantern and Superman closed. But they will not be ready to go until Memorial Day weekend, so a bit of a wait there. But in my opinion, that's not that big of a loss considering we have the rest of the parks to look forward to. And up here, Bugs Bunny National Park will only be open on weekends through Memorial Day weekend, which is then when it will start operating daily which is fine because Junior Thrill Seekers will be open daily, judging off the way this is labeled. And we can see that Barnstormer is on the ride list and doesn't have any exceptions like the yellow highlights for the other attractions. So that tells me it will be ready to go come opening day, which is definitely something we're going to be paying attention to. I hope it is ready to go because we've been waiting a very long time for that attraction. In addition to that, we do know that Main Street Market is undergoing a bit of a refresh, which isn't really reflected on the map here. It still has its old color scheme and is still called Main Street Market. So maybe it will still remain as Main Street Market. We'll have to wait and see with that. But in addition to this in the shopping tab, we already talked about the new Flash store. There's also Fright Fest Fanatics, which is going to be remaining as a year-long location in its spot over here by the Wild Walkway next to El Toro's sort of turnaround over there. That will be staying open all year round so you can get your Fright Fest merchandise whenever you want during the park season, which I think is a great change. And we also have number 16, which is Six Flags Adventure World. That is the new shop that is going to be taking over Flags, which was in the green tent. So it's right across from Attitudes, which is in the orange slash yellow tent. So Flags is no more, Six Flags Adventure World is now there. And there's nothing here for the red tent, so I assume they're gonna keep it for Big Top Terror, which is the terror trail during Fright Fest. I'm curious how they're gonna route the queue, but that's a problem for later in the year. In addition to that, we have some new dining locations. We have three new roller coaster coffee locations, which we can see at two, at 19, and at 38. So 19 is right over here next to Batman's Drop, right across from Fat Burger. That location was supposed to be six below in 2023. To my knowledge, it never wound up opening, so it looks like they're going to strip the Six Below branding and put a new Roller Coaster Coffee location there. In addition, two, which is right next to Sweet Treats, that will also be a Roller Coaster Coffee location. And the final one, 38 over here, is next to El Toro's Turnaround. This used to be Funnel Cake Factory, and before that it was the Gyro Place. So I think it's really cool that they have coffee locations spaced out across the entire park. That way, no matter where you are in the park, there's not a coffee location too far away from you, which I think is really great planning. In addition to that, we can see all the other food locations. Nothing too different other than the roller coaster coffee locations. We do have the Kickin' Chicken Sports Bar, which has been renovated for the 2024 season. You can see that at 34 there. So I am curious if that is going to take over the Chopsticks Express location, because I don't see it listed here on the map. So that could mean that the only chop six left is the one next to Skull Mountain. We'll have to wait and see on opening day if that winds up being the case, but that is what it's looking like right now. Other than that, though, everything here is looking pretty similar to what it did last year. We do know that Central Brew House is not going to be called that this year. It is going back to Main Street Pub, which it's kind of flip-flopped back and forth between names for the past few years now. So it looks like that's what they've landed on for this year. We already talked about Central City Snacks. But otherwise, that is pretty much everything new on the park map for Six Flags Great Adventures 2024 season. This is one of the greatest looking park maps just because of how many attractions there are on here. You can see there's not really much open space, which I think is great. There is a really big open plot right here where Flash currently is, and it's really nice to see that filled in now. Pretty much all that's left is a few areas on the left side of the park and everything is looking really great, but I'm so excited for the 2024 season. If you guys are hyped to check out Great Adventure once again on March 16th or whenever you're going for the first time this season, let me know down in the comments. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more Six Flags Great Adventure content coming soon to Hollywood Studios. Goodbye, guys.